is up everybody welcome back to another video today's video we are back with another draft breakdown video for the detroit lions and today man i'm excited for this one we're going to be moving it back in our last video we talked about lions top pick in this year's draft terry and arnold and he is a dog so go check out that video but today we're pulling it back into the sixth round pick 189 out of lsu so let's get it started. It's worth checking him out. I'm glad I did. I like him. Makai Wingo, you are a Detroit Lion. Welcome, everybody, to our video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we are back with another draft breakdown video. And I am pumped up about this one. First off, it's just been a minute since we've done a video, so it's good to be back. This is a player that I was a big fan of coming into the draft. In our last mock draft, we had this player in our mock draft. I went from pick 140 to 128 to make sure that I got a guy. This is going to be Makai Wingo, defensive tackle out of LSU. The Detroit line selected him by trading up which is typically what they do they move around the board and after drafting this player it was the comments of Brad Holmes that made me so intrigued about doing this video and that's because of where he said that he really liked the player which was at the defensive end position and if you watched Makai Wingo with LSU this past season you maybe didn't see much of that at all if anything he was really just rotating between playing a three technique two I he was mainly a defensive tackle against teams like Ole Miss he played like a nose tackle so when I heard that I was like okay I don't really know what he's talking about here and of course I didn't do as much of game film before we drafted the player that I did for this video but when you pull back to 2022 you start to see some of the defensive end reps even in 2023 depending on games that you're looking at and situation you start to get different looks he had two different defensive coordinators in his time with LSU and actually part of the reason that he transferred out of Missouri this is a three-year college player transferring out of Missouri was because he wanted stability in the coaching staff and he said when he was recruited there the defensive line coach those guys were fired so he he wanted some stability. Transfers the LSU, they have two different defensive coordinators. So I don't know if that worked out perfectly. However, his career was really strong with LSU. And we'll just start there first. The guy is just over 21 years old. He's extremely young. Usually when you get players that are this young that are entering the draft, they're usually dogs, man. They're usually going towards the top of the draft. So the fact that the Lions were able to get a player that was this talented at this spot in the draft, I think has a lot to do, and we'll talk about this, with kind of figuring out what position that is. But that was also why I was so interested in diving into this player, is trying to figure out where can you get the best out of Makai Wingo. He's not a freakish athlete. He doesn't have your typical build in terms of length or size or height. It's like, where does this guy fit? But the play, it's there. He plays at a very high level. So let's start there first. Quick little background. Who is Makai Wingo? So as I touched on, very young player. Last two seasons spent with LSU. He earned wearing the number 18 for this past season, which means a ton for LSU representing the national championship and as their head coach stated traits and spirit of a winning program he was also named a permanent team captain for the 2023 season and again that was only his second season there it wasn't like he was a senior either so he's named a permanent team captain statistically speaking he missed a few games but for a lot of the season he was reportedly playing through a groin injury which ultimately had him miss basically the entire November but then he returned against Wisconsin in a bowl game and I thought he had one of his best games that I had seen and that wasn't just because Statistically, he had two sacks in that game. That was as a run defender, the discipline that he was playing with. You look at some of these testing scores, and I talk about him not being a freakish athlete. And you can see that by the scores there, whether that's being at six, just over six foot tall, 284. That's a fine size of weight, depending on what position you're putting him in. If he's in the interior, like, okay, maybe that's a little bit on the smaller side. And that's what I thought of him as coming into the draft because that's what he had played. And I was like, he'll probably need to put on some weight there. But then if you look at him as a defensive end, you don't really get the height. You don't necessarily get some of the freakish athleticism. There was there is good athleticism there. You only get 32 inch arms, smaller hand size, 7-3-3, three cone drill, 31 and a half inch vertical, doesn't blow you away with explosiveness. The 4-5-8-40 is actually a really strong time as well as the 1-6-4 10 yard split. And a good 28 bench rest stretch, which was 25 at the combine, but 28 at his pro day. Now, with that, as you can see, I also put John Kaminsky's numbers on here as well. They're not necessarily identical, but just to kind of put a comparison out there, because we're going to talk about him more towards the end of the video. And Guys like Josh Paschal, John Kaminsky, playing that big D end role. I want you to keep that in mind as we're watching this player. I think that is the vision for the Lions here, and that was the vision of Brad Holmes, is that he could actually be very effective in that big defensive end role. Now, I think it's also important to understand that we always talk about versatility for a reason. Guys that can play up and down the line of scrimmage is valuable to have, especially in our defense schematically. It's valuable to have guys that can play different spots. Injuries pop up. You need guys that can move around. Lions always value that. And for what they do schematically, having kind of your pieces like the James Houston who will step down the line of scrimmage and under fronts. Having a piece like this that you could put on that same side of the line of scrimmage in those spots. Now I didn't want to be that guy that put this in here, but I don't want to put it in here anyway. Okay, this is not Aaron Donald. Let me make that clear. But these numbers that you're looking at, if I didn't say that, would you know that this is Aaron Donald? Maybe you would. 
But I do want to throw this in here because I think in terms of build, length, testing scores, there are a lot of similarities across the board. Again, this is not Aaron Donald. I think that goes without saying, hopefully. Okay, I'm not saying this is Aaron Donald. But when we talk about the flexibility, we're going to talk about the position that he could play in. The role that I think he's very successful in, which is playing as the big defensive end, working against tackles in the four technique, four I, five technique, kind of playing around that area as we talk through this. It's really important to keep in mind that Brad Holmes was there when they drafted Brad Hol- Aaron Donald at a similar size, and that was one of the biggest questions. Again, this is not Aaron Donald, but there are similarities in terms of build. Really being able to play between the three technique, which is outside shade of a guard, all the way to the five technique, which is outside shade of a tackle, and then flip it around and maybe over fronts play a little bit wide. Maybe you want to play him head up on a tight end, or you want to play him with an inside technique of a tight end and a seven technique. So the flexibility is necessary to have, and we have a lot of guys on our front that we know has that flexibility. And that's not just sub package, but I will say it's interesting when you watch this player, a lot of times in sub packages, yes, he would kick inside like you typically do. Okay, let's just kick him to the interior, let him work on centers. But he actually did a lot of, especially in 2022, kicking outside in sub packages when we know it's a pass we're not going to put him inside we're actually going to put him outside and let him work on the offensive tackles and I think that speaks to a lot of what the Lions were excited about about this player is some of the success that he showed there against very good tackles when he kicked toward the outside now statistically speaking you can see the numbers again they don't blow you away but he did only play in eight games 12 furries he had 20 the year before five sacks two against Wisconsin in that final game so he did get some sacks racked up some good production in terms of pass rush win rate which is nearly eight percent that's strong amongst everybody else coming out of the draft lower on the run stop win rate category at 3.4 percent and then I put some of this the the snap snap counts that he took by position 2023 264 snaps over the b gap which a lot of times three technique maybe it's a four i versus in 2022 201 snaps he took place outside of a tackle now he played in different spots than just those two spots but those were kind of the two numbers that stuck out to me there so with all that being said it's now time to dive into the player. If you haven't seen one of these videos before, they are usually on the longer side, but we're going to go show clips as I talk through the player. I'm going to do my best and I have a ton of voiceovers. I try to take my notes, talk about it, show the clips as I'm talking about it, and then we go on for there that we can keep this pace kind of moving. Run defense is one of the places where I think it's very clear of why the Lions would be interested in more of that big defensive end role for this player. And you can see that by some of the measurables, maybe a little bit, but also just in terms of the play style, the way that he's built, I think he's just naturally built a little bit more top heavy then bottom heavy you could see the anchor that he creates underneath it's a little bit on the lighter side he's just naturally built it feels like to play a little bit wider than necessarily living in the interior specifically in the NFL it's not saying he didn't have success there in college because he did had a lot of success there and he played a majority of the snaps there so he knows how to play in those spots now I thought there was improvements at times in 2023 in ways that you could utilize him definitely don't think this is a two gapping defensive lineman maybe if you kick him a little bit wider you could find some more success there but I think naturally the best you're going to get out of him is playing upfield and attacking. He showed real ability to be a one-gapping defensive lineman that could shoot upfield, but also playing through blocks, playing with aggressiveness at the point of attack, and playing some of that gap in a half roll. Even though he doesn't consistently get the knock back into other gaps, I think that's where he's much more natural. You're probably not going to have a lot of sustained success asking him to two-gap, hold his ground, sink himself down, handle double teams, and being able to get off a bap B gap. Like you're probably not going to want him to live in that area. But he really showed flexion across the board, and I thought different defensive schemes kind of brought that out of him. For me, some of the issues that I had, I thought his base depth and sink was below average to sit and hold his ground. His length is also limited, so it kind of points back to the point that I just made about playing some more of those two-gap situations. He's also, to me, not built to live between guards with the body mass unless he's getting a field or attacking blocks at the point of attack. Now, I thought in 2022, you got to see a lot more aggressive style of attacking a field, getting into blocks right off the line of scrimmage and trying to control stack and shed from there. Now, you got some hit and miss results, but he had a lot of stack and shed opportunities and a lot of success doing that playing more that aggressive one gapping style but I think if you're going to ask him to live between guards two I one technique play him as you if you're asking him to play inside of an offensive guard at the NFL I think for that you're going to want to play a little bit more of an aggressive style otherwise you're just going to have inconsistent results there mainly coming back to his inability to consistently create anchor and hold ground at the point of attack he does play with inside hands and he's leveraged into contact when attacking downhill here you see it against Mississippi State with his inside hands here something that you like he naturally has leverage just being over six foot tall but he also has the ability to create back bend and when he creates that leverage into contact that's where you get a lot of success one of my favorite 
favorite aspects of his game the ability to create force and he creates it through that lower body through his body and into contact now he does have a stronger upper body you saw the 28 bench rest reps there is real strength there at that point of attack to create some jolt but I think he does a nice job of creating it through his body and that leads to a lot of consistency and something that can transition into the NFL when you watch him he doesn't seem like he's just bullying guys and moving them around instead it's more the fact that he's able to really create it with positioning entry points and then the momentum that he's able to create and leverage that he's able to create into blocks he has the short area burst and foot quickness for entry points with feet to create momentum and force by getting under pads and he, I thought he was way better at this in 2023 2022 I thought there were examples where he was just kind of jumping into blocks but in 2023 the discipline to stay low keep himself leveraged off the line of scrimmage getting into blocks with leverage staying leveraged through the rep because that was something that at times he could try to get contact early he'd pop up he'd lose that discipline then he'd try to recreate it throughout the rep and even though he had some of the knee bend to create an anchor it would just kind of work out throughout the rep because he just was on a lighter side in the lower body ability to create leverage is fairly natural I think that's huge again some of that is just by the way that he's built and the height that he has but he also carries the hip flexion to roll outside of an offensive tackle from inside depending on what you're asking to do schematically as a defense but playing maybe inside of an offensive tackle or playing head up on an offensive tackle so this could be at times some of that big defensive end role as I touched on and this is an area that I not only feel that he's natural but he carries that hip flexibility to roll he has the core strength in these spots and he typically has good entry entry angles to these positions and that allows him to position the blocks read use his feet and hips to control the edge at the point of attack and gain control he's also capable as I touched on on speed splitting gaps as a one-gapping defensive lineman, specifically off the backside, where you're just asking him to specifically get upfield. Now, notice the lockout. This is what he does to pass rusher and run defender. He locks out the offensive line before getting upfield to keep himself clean. And I think, again, some of that flexion in his torso, he can make himself a little bit slippery, a little bit difficult to get contact onto. That does show up in some of those spots. Where you typically saw those looks at LSU, for example, was when they were in more aggressive, short area, short yardage situations where they could just ask him to jump upfield. Maybe they were blitzing. Everybody has a single gap you just ask him to rush up field and then his eyes would go more towards the ball and you'd see enough explosiveness usually split gaps get himself through cleanly and then he also carries a lot of the body control once he gets behind the line of scrimmage to also make a play on the football so he showed ability to do things like that usually you're going to see more of that in short area situations short yard situations it's a three technique outside of a guard I liked a lot of aspects of his game and I love the ability to create leverage in the contact though I did feel like and this is kind of similar at times to Pecco where I was like hey he needs to speed up his process we need that more consistent I think at times you're going to need that from this player where he'll fall behind handling double teams. He's a little slow to get himself into position. Though he plays with high football intelligence and high awareness of block schemes and he gets on top of plays quickly and he plays with some of the best vision. I remember that being an aspect that before the draft I loved of his game, the consistency of which he could just find the ball through traffic. He does those things well, but I think positioning wise, you'll see some of the lack of force on the backside of run plays as a three technique, for example, on the outside zones. Uh, he gets moved Moved, attacking that outside shoulder doesn't consistently play behind a line of scrimmage then again if he's playing double teams down blocks you're going to get more inconsistency there rather than playing single blocks being able to get upfield versus kind of laterally trying to mirror and then get upfield on the offensive lineman you talk about handling some of the double teams this is where you do see the awareness and you'll see the flashes of proactiveness to try to corkscrew handle down blocks handle himself in those spots however again i think he just lacks the lower body mass for consistency in those positions and i think if he sped up his process and made that more more consistent you'd also see improvement there as well what he does he can create initial force especially when he's working downhill first step is downhill but he is consistently unable to anchor down he does carry the knee bend however to handle the down block in those spots and he's not consistently washed out of the play unless he gets into position a little bit late or he pops up and loses that leverage right off the snap and he's trying to regain it through the play you get a double team block he'll get washed out of the play his base maintains width I think he, he stays usually shorter with a shoulder width apart in terms of his base and his footwork through contact and because that he's not getting too linear consistently but he also doesn't consistently play wide enough to sit down and drop an anchor and again that shows up against double teams I did think that improved anticipation could help uh, speed up that base set but does allow himself to get rolled out of trying to control or having the ability to control beyond one gap he can usually position himself but again he does lack some of that mass where eventually he'll get pushed out of the play so two gapping is just not what he's built for also some of the length aspect there as well 
well. You want him to play fast. You kick him a little bit wider. You try to minimize some of the down blocks from the tackle. But instead, if he's playing a four eye, if he's playing head up on a tackle, if he's getting a, it's going to be through the guard position. And he plays with that awareness. He plays with a short area of foot quickness to position himself. He plays with the hips and also the torso flexion to really position himself well and create leverage into contact. He does those things that I think you put him in those spots. You're going to minimize some of the downside there. You're going to improve the upside. And then you could also still get the occasional splitting a gap, the pushing and playing behind a line of scrimmage at the point of attack. For him, it'll be just dialing in consistency of keeping his leverage down into initial contact because him trying to reset throughout is going to be a problem against bigger offense tackles. And again, he doesn't have overwhelming length or big hands where he's going to easily stack and shed from those positions. So dialing that in, speeding up that process consistently because he usually reads offensive line schemes well. I just think at times you need to crank up the anticipation where he's not as much so reading it and then reacting where it's a little bit more of like, okay, I feel it. Let me get to that spot a little bit faster. I think you may have to cr cr uh, crank up some of that processing speed to just add more improvement there. But more of that showed up in 2022 where he would enter with an elevated pad level and then he would try to drop throughout the rep. Those undisciplined reps early, his pads would rise and he would struggle to hold ground. With that being said, though, in 2023, I thought it was a lot better. I thought, honestly, just the Wisconsin game as a whole was a really good is a really big positive where you just saw the discipline. You saw the want to sit himself down throughout rep. He worked to keep his pads down on entry angles. Let's talk about the quickness in terms of playing inside techniques. Two eye, four eye. If he's playing gap and a half, he's playing one gap in these spots. He has that ability to process quickly into contact. Do a nice job with quick feet on contact. His feet stay to the ground, maintaining at least enough base, base width where he can continue to kind of sink himself. He plays with that knee bend and positioning himself through the rep and trying to drop his body weight as the rep continues on. He also plays with very consistent inside hands on first contact with real jolting pop on first contact as well. And he has halting power to control quick stack and shed. He constantly comes to balance as I touched on after initial contact. You'll see it a lot, but he needs to avoid being top heavy. This is something that I think can become an issue. He just has to stay disciplined to avoid this because he's kind of built a little bit top heavy. He needs to avoid playing top heavy. He himself leveraged down because he plays with great vision for the ball. He plays with good Good hip and core strength, which was, brings a lot of upside for his ability to shed. He just can struggle getting over gaps that he is playing. I think that's a little bit of an issue in some of the range that he carries from gap to gap, which again could lead to some limitations there, depending on where you're asking him to play. Not into the block, but once the play has already started to work over gaps, I think there could be a little bit of lack of range there. Awareness is strong. For example, against Missouri, who kept running these wide zone looks with their offensive line, even if they weren't giving them the football, you would see the quickness to quickly want to gain control of the rep. You'd also see some of the lateral movement skills where he could really create lateral movement but also stay square to the line of scrimmage kind of like a linebacker or a running back that ability to stay square to the line of scrimmage as he was working down the line was extremely impressive so you would get those flashes as well off the backside then again he also carries that short area foot quickness to mirror interior offensive linemen and on the outside against offensive linemen so for me he carries a lot of traits that you like he's very aware of his footwork and getting his footwork into positions to make himself effective on contact another part of the reason I like him a little bit wider but it's also, again, creating that anchor and having that ability to rework back over gaps. I would love to see this part of his game improve, not just initially setting the edge like he does here, but it's also the ability to then anchor yourself down, utilize your hands, swim back inside over gaps. That's just something that you don't see enough. We have to start here as a pass rusher is the first step, and this was an area that I like it, don't necessarily love it. My grade is kind of just an adequate spot for having that first step quickness. I think on the interior, it's not to the level where you could ex expect that's going to be something that's going to consistently add wins. That being said, though, what really makes me optimistic about this player in general is that the way that he wins, run defense, pass rush, he doesn't win with great athleticism. He doesn't win with elite get off where it's like, man, that first step, and he had that interior offensive lineman on, on his heels. Like He doesn't win like that consistently. That's not his game. So with that it actually makes you really optimistic about what's actually potentially here and how this could translate because I think most of the time in the NFL unless you're like just a completely different athlete that you normally don't see being a good athlete that beats up on inferior opponents at the college level isn't necessarily going to translate to the NFL and that's not how this player wins he wins with a lot more of the awareness and a little subtleties to his game as a pass rusher to open up opportunities a lot of the contact balance he wins a lot like that he doesn't necessarily win with his first step so I think it's just interesting because I really do believe that this could translate this is the kind of player that gets drafted that's this young but he's also this productive in back-to-back -back seasons his first step does so however create forward momentum and force through the lower body upfield 
field and into contact. You could say the same thing as a run defender as well. That forward momentum that he creates through that first step. Again, he shoots it through his body. It's not just his upper body that's creating punches, and that's going to lead to consistency. He also can stride forward and close airspace on first mo movement against interior offensive linemen. So you'll see that a little bit more guards, centers. Occasionally, he could be in relatively plus positions in those spots. I didn't think that he brought the quickness off the line of scrimmage to beat centers or beat them right off the line. He also doesn't necessarily bring the strength, the uh, stride depth that he's going to be able to close when he gets an edge. So a lot of times it's like, hey, can we get an edge as a pass rusher? Can we get an edge on an offensive lineman so we can get upfield? And in this case, he does that often. Or rare that you're going to see him finish through creating that initial edge. He doesn't create some of the stride. He doesn't create some of the second effort quickness and burst through that initial contact that trade transition ability. He doesn't really have that consistently win once he creates that initial edge. I think from against centers, you see that they're so quick into their stance, you have to be a lot quicker the closer you get to the ball. And I think for him, you don't see some of that quickness that would take him over the top of like, this could get guys into trouble. I don't necessarily see that. He also has less anticipation for get off, but he's much more quicker reading the ball when he's shooting the gaps, or again, he's playing as like an edge on third downs. Now this is first step, run defense and pass rush. A lot of times he reads the offensive lineman. That's what he reacts to his offensive line movement. So it gets tackles, or I think gets him in issues. As I said, he gets off a little bit slow at times. He could see the block coming. He doesn't position himself fast enough. Though, that's what he's reading. He plays through that. And I think you'll get flashes of like, okay, he feels the center got off the line even though his guard didn't yet. But you don't get consistency in terms of movement quickness there. You also don't get consistency reading the ball. He's kind of just more reactive to movement. That being said, though, if it's a situation of shooting gaps, he's not reading at his offensive lineman. He's watching the ball. If it's, if it's, it's his third down, they know they're going to pass, and he's out wide, he watches the ball. So I think in those spots, you do see improved first step, just reactiveness. So do think he carries less quickness for first lateral movement, kind of that first step. This shows up more as a run defender and some of the mirror there. I think his second stride becomes more effective. The first one's not as effective. Feels like he's getting going a little bit in those spots. And as I touched on, he may need to speed up his process to position a little bit quicker and anticipate. His explosion from a wide alignment to me is probably below average. I don't think it's anything that's certainly threatening. Um, it's it's fine. It's fine, but I would, I, would, I would categorize it as below average. You're not going to get guys on their heels consistently. Maybe more five techniques, you could be a little bit more effective there because he does create it throughout his body, but it's not. It's just not super quick. It also doesn't cover a ton of ground either. Again, it feels like it builds up a little bit, but what I like, as I touched on, is the guy plays with his own pace. He plays with that control and his own pace as an edge rusher and as an interior rusher. I think that brings a lot of consistent value because he's not reliant on, I got to beat you off the line. I'm going to play my style and I'm going to read through your, how you're setting, your, and I'm going to anticipate through that and have that awareness to win that way but uh, the short strides are a little bit of an issue so overall I don't think the first step is anything that's great here um, but what I do like as the pass for sure is that he carries again that short area burst and also rolling hips in a short area in the interior it's very noticeable from the interior the ability to roll his hips deflection in the upper body and also in the hips to kind of keep himself clean become a little bit slippery and also short area burst and that can be a little bit more effective when you talk about getting into blocks from the interior than just beating guys off the line of scrimmage some issues as a pass rusher specific from the interior and that was dealing with jump sets I didn't think he was consistently winning those matchups for me I thought first off lateral depth that he was able to create agility shake I don't think any of those were outstanding I think it was a little bit underwhelming some of the shake that he was able to create laterally the distance that he was able to create the ability to kind of just slide off of blocks and make them miss and then transition up field that's not something that's going to stand out he's much more consistent of attacking half man playing through contact getting an edge pushing the pocket it's not going to be as much of the aspect of he's sliding by offensive linemen you just didn't get that necessarily in college from the interior. It's part of the reason I think it makes a ton of sense why Brad is saying, like, hey, we kind of like him as a defensive end. It makes a ton of sense there because I think what he wins as a defensive end could translate a lot better to how he wins as an interior rusher from just a consistency aspect. Speed to power also feels like it needs a little bit of a buildup. Now, he can create that initial jolt and you'll see that interior. You can create that initial jolt, but it will stall out, as we'll touch on. I said he had issues against jump sets. I thought we saw that against Wisconsin. What I do like is his contact balance. It's great interior contact balance with active feet through contact. Um, he also opens up the inside of chest opportunities to stack and shed as a run defender. It's also as a pass rusher. He has forceful impact on contact that he creates through the lower body so he can create that first jolt. What I love though, and this is the thing that I think is translatable, is his excellent feel for opening up opportunities and understanding balance, leverage, and attacking half man. And I think especially as a DN, he showed this. We'll talk about that specifically more here in a second. But it's that understanding of like, okay, tackle setting like this. Like as a DN, you'll see it. His first step 
step. It's not extremely explosive. He's not dynamic. He's not threatening a top tackle immediately off the line. But his second strides become much more effective. But that's because he becomes decisive as a as a defensive end. When he's rushing tackles, there's a decisiveness to him. And I think immediately in that first step, he's reading how is your tackle setting? How are you going to respond to this? How can I set that up to create space? And he does the same thing as an interior defensive lineman. While to me, I thought he had less success just trying to win with bursts off the line. But when he was playing at his own pace and just trying to find the slither, trying to find the angles to say, let me get inside here. Oh, now I exposed your chest. Boom. Let me attack like this. Let me get half in. I'm unbalanced. You're unbalanced. I thought Darius Robinson did some similar things to this, the Missouri defensive end, just from a different position. I think you get those aspects in this player's game where you just get that really good feel. His feet also stay on the ground. That I think improves his balance as well because they consistently move, but they also stay a little to the ground. He's not becoming uh, specifically linear in that aspect. Now, I think he becomes linear in the sense that his walk back will die out, and that's when things become linear. But for the most part, he does a nice job of keeping his feet on the ground and not becoming straight up and running straight and then getting knocked off. His contact balance is consistent. He works through contact really well, and he finishes through contact with also a cornering ability. We'll talk about this more reflection, but truly he has a cornering ability at the top of the rush. You would not expect from a guy of this size, that body control at the top of the rush to finish. You would just not expect it. He carries that to shut off his pass rush and get flat on the line of scrimmage. That's something that's really impressive, is that cornering that he carries, and a lot of that's through contact, because if he gets an edge, the guy's going to ride his hip. It's about that ability to kind of corner through the top and then work his way flat to the quarterback, uh, because he's usually going to have to deal with some sort of contact through the pass rush. Indecision as an interior rusher, I do think pops up a little bit. He's not always just consistently putting pressure on an interior offensive lineman. I think he also can have indecisiveness on how to deal with a second offensive lineman or when he's doubled immediately. There's not always a plan there on how to handle it. I don't think he carries like natural slither where it's like, I'm just going to get skinny on the play and slide through. the. He doesn't carry that, but he does carry the slipperiness. And again, that comes through the flexion. It comes through the quick feet. He does carry slipperiness. I don't think he carries maybe natural slither necessarily. So he has problems kind of splitting double teams. I think double teams are a little bit of an issue. It kind of just turns it to like, I'm going to stall out. Let me just see if I can read the quarterback and get on top of the play. And he does. He plays a good vision, but usually you don't get a lot of success once two offensive linemen go his direction. And if the center and guard take him, you're just not going to get a ton of wins there. Bull rush. This is one of the things that he does the most. And as I said, he has a lot of variety in his pass rush moves. But the bull rush specifically is the one that stands out because he drops his upper body into contact for leverage. Now, as I touched on, the issue here is that he becomes linear and then his walk back tends to stall out. That's where he gets into problems when he becomes linear. And also, if an offensive lineman gets squared into that initial contact and they're squared and balanced, that's where things kind of die out on him as well. Even if he can create that initial jolt, things can kind of die out pretty quickly. Being said, though, that's where he wins is his ability to open up your chest, attack you off the line of scrimmage, like here against Missouri. Look at this bull rush. You see the feel against the left guard. Opens up the chest to attack. Boom, he creates that initial contact. Then it's about ability to finish. Now, Closing speed, the vision, and also the cornering ability leads to really good closing burst. Here's where it's all the kind of feel. It's the instincts of a pass rusher that I think show up. You'll get the occasions where it's going to stall out on him. He gets linear. He doesn't necessarily bring some of the lower body girth, I think, to continue to just maul over guys. You're not going to get that. So where he wins is when instinctually you get that feel. When he wins early and then instinctually his feet keep moving and his feet keep running, which they typically do, then he has the instincts to find the edge. Here against Ole Miss on this bull rush. Uh, when the re-anchor begins, look at him slightly twist his torso and then avoid to get to the quarterback. His hands stay active. His hands stay in the inside. He continues to battle, continues to battle. His hands stay active. Now, if he had a little bit more agility where he could like plant redirect and flip over blocks that would be pretty awesome I just don't think that's there he has kind of the flexion where he can kind of slide out and just be slippery that's where I think he's going to win once he gets that initial movement and that's how he's going to be able to finish also active hands are going to help him as well his hips create that second jolt through the rep you see it here against Ole Miss and here against Auburn look at that ability his resinking of the weight to create that movement he has that ability to drop to redrop his weight it also opens up punch and rip opportunities he has a slippery game hips feet and torso to slide through and he brings a lot of variety. You see the skip club moves that wins a lot. And again, he very quickly makes that decision when in one-on-one -on -one situations. One-on-one -on -one with the tackle. One-on-one -on -one with the guard as the three-tech. When he gets one-on-one, -on -one, he's very quick to say, I'm going to use my first step. Okay, you're not setting too far enough outside. Boom. Skip club move. I'm going to get right around the edge on you. Or if it's as an offensive tackle, you're setting a little bit wide here, you're a little bit tall, this is going to turn into a bull rush. And that is where he is sudden because his ability to set up offensive linemen and press to that point of attack. So this is going to be that interior pass rush where I'm going to plant and I'm going to slither and I'm going to dip and bend because I grabbed that ability to dip and bend at 284, which is impressive. And I'm going to keep rushing through the pocket and I'm going to create pressure. 
That's how he does it. He has a very big variety within his hand usage to open up a lot of aspects of ways to win. Here you see the punch, the hips roll, and then the rip through. The swim moves, oftentimes you see that. Now I think one area where he gets himself in trouble here is that he can be a little bit slow with his hands and he can leave himself exposed because even though he has deflection, he doesn't have that agility to just shake guys. So he can leave himself a little exposed and clean punches can just kind of jolt him in the chest and shut down those swim moves, shut down the rep at that point of attack. A lot of variety that he can throw at you. And then when you start to slide over to the D end, this is where you know I think you really got to focus. 2022 showed a lot of this. And again, this was a year ago, but he even showed some of this 2023. He succeeds by pressing offensive tackles into contact to allow late wins to gain an edge. Here against Wisconsin, the two sacks that he had. He has a, his long arm will die out, which I don't love. I think he becomes linear. I don't think he has some of maybe the ankle strength or flexion that you would love to be able to win with long arm consistently and open up that as a real possibility to win with long arm. I think you'd help him a ton. His transitions are also a little bit slow and lacking some twitch. So what I mean is I don't think he's a guy that's consistently going to give you a ton of variety in terms of, okay, boom, he won here and then he slid off and then he got into this second pass first move. I don't think you're going to get a ton of that. It's kind of something that's going to roll through the rep. He's got the initial win. Now he's going to roll through. Okay, he got the jolt. Now he's going to roll through, bam, into this, slide into this with his hands. You'll get some flexion. You're not going to get a lot of stop, start, agility, boom boom it kind of can die out on him a little bit I think that's because he lacks that twitch and burst after initial contact we maintain speed around the edge he attacks offensive tackle sets he has the ability to convert speed to power he has the flat the, the hips to do it the hips to really create force and knockback you saw it against Arkansas he ran over their offensive tackle twice in that game by creating speed to power he has that bull rushing ability when they don't get wide enough he'll just run you over he locks out with his inside arm he does this as a run defender too which is what he does is he does a nice job of locking out using inside arm to lock out wall off that we can create something off it or also just keep his body clean he does a really good job of this it's a really subtle aspect of his hand usage which i think is one of the strongest parts of his game do think that he has problems closing ground and offensive tackles which is one of the biggest issues i think if you had him in more of say if you had him in a six technique or a seven technique right where he's inside of a tight end he's much closer to the tackle on contact that may help him because in a short area he has the quickness the foot quickness and also he has that flexibility where he can kind of open up angles and small areas that could work that's how it works in the interior that could work from tackle I think if you put him as a nine technique you get him super wide you're gonna have issues just because he can't really threaten a tackle as much as you would like him to in terms of like okay he's pushing outside tackles loaded up now plant and drive and stick back into the tackle it may take two strides for him to get there he doesn't really carry that great length to get contact early so now you're not getting some of that explosiveness or you're also not creating a lot of the immediate like boom he opened it up now I can expose it you're not getting that it's a little bit more slow so I think the closer you get into the action against offensive tackles while also allowing him to work against offensive tackles the more upside you're going to have so the idea of four eye four technique he could transition win in short areas that's why it makes sense to me what brad holmes said of the way that he they really liked him he plays with good body control at the top of the rush again very impressive for a guy at his size and when it comes to agility the dancing bear term i think fits a play like this the movement skills to me he's just more of a linear rusher and i think that's going to help him a ton playing against tackles a lot more and it's still dealing against guards but when he's dealing against guards not having to deal with the double team of okay now here's a center sliding over it's one thing if i'm dealing with a left guard and the tackle slides over okay fine i'm taking two guys with me maybe i get an edge i probably have an edge rusher coming off the edge too but if i'm at a four eye or four technique and he's not getting doubled by the center as well, I think the opportunity is going to open up, and I think his effectiveness and consistency as a pass rusher is really going to open up. So I actually really understand what Brad Holmes was saying there. He carries the dip and rip bend, so that's another aspect of his game. He also reads, like I said, the office tackle for the first step, and where he excels is, like I said, he doesn't win with freakish athleticism he wins with pace he wins with playing at his own pace also being able to match his footwork to his hand usage i want to set this move up watch me boom quick my quickly put my feet in position and watch them work on a string even though it didn't always work i did love the little crafty hesitation move that he showed in both seasons in multiple games and then quickly to the hand usage as i said maybe not being ready exposing himself to the chest maybe not necessarily being able to get off of kind of the plan and that allows offensive linemen to kind of set up when they want to jam him in the chest and on top of that I think he could improve, especially with the decisiveness of being a little bit more mean with his hands. He plays on a string in the lower body in his hands. I mean, it looks like a guy that would you would think is like, oh, he's 24 coming out. He's played for six years. It's like, all right, I get that. He's doing this at 21, and you get that aspect, and it makes sense because if you're going to win at the SEC level, which is where he wanted to stay in the SEC when he transferred, if you're going to win there, 
you got to have that. You got to have some of that. And he absolutely brings that to the table. However, the biggest issue is I do think that he loses force when he turns the corner. That's really one of the biggest issues I have. So say he's over a guard or he's in a three technique and you're trying to jump him outside of a tackle, turn the corner and then create force. I don't think that force creates fast enough. As I, said, I think he needs a little bit of a runway sometimes. And I think his inability to create force instantly into those spots can really limit his ability to win as a pass rusher. But the hand usage is going to open up a lot. His length isn't great. Shows up as a tackler. It's below average. But the body control does help him in those spots as a tackler. And he usually does does wrap up but the hand usage the activeness the feet that tie along with it that's where he's going to be a menace is that he ties his hands really well together and it's going to be a problem as a pass rusher wrap this up uh the flexibility as i touched on this a ton hip and torso flexion please uh you know <laughs> i've probably said it about 50 times today so i will stop with ability to turn the corner at the top of the rush here against wisconsin you see that club rip move he also has really nice control behind a line of scrimmage 2022 was like three times where i saw him jump on a screen didn't see in the 2023 um i didn't necessarily see that that being said though in 2022 what you just got to see with the body control wasn't that he was always anticipating the screen it was just that he had the body control to stop rework back into the play and just not run beyond it's a really good reason why his pursuit is so strong it's not only that he's pretty fast in open space where he could just run but in the motor is really strong every game he's chasing guys down but it's also the aspect that he has the body control that he can actually work in a space get off blocks and he constantly has the vision that you want of a defense lineman again that was my favorite trait when I had initially watched this player he rolls to the top of the rush with body control and contact balance I just don't think his ankle flexion is right in terms of strength there either and uh, I think it can hurt a little bit for the long arm but I also think that he carries sufficient knee bend to deal with double teams especially if he's a little bit wider I think in the interior you need more consistency but I think it's sufficient and there's also some awareness of like, okay, I probably should sit down in these spots. You like the discipline as well. I think it's another strong aspect of his game. He, I didn't see him jump outside one time. I, I, don't, I don't know that he does. That's awesome. I love the discipline. He occasionally could become a little top-heavy, as I said. That's just something you got to dial in, but it was better this past year. He will get caught jumping behind gaps. I thought that would happen as well, where he was kind of like not anticipating the movement, where he'd feel it, and he knew where it was going, but he wouldn't anticipate it, and he was just kind of taking steps that were false steps. Then he'd fall behind blocks, but he did battle to keep his pads down against Wisconsin. He controlled. He was very controlled in space, and he was also very controlled on the backside as a run defender, the quick feet, closing the line of scrimmage, playing. If you, We see this a ton. The way we play our defense, teams will put John Kaminsky, right, in kind of that zone read with the quarterback, and it's like, oh, if he pulls down, now Kaminsky's got to do something in space, or Pascal's got to do something in space, and they've handled that. This player, Wingo, could do that. Again, you would have limitations athletically, but he has the foot quickness. His feet are constantly moving. He balances himself. He sits down. He works laterally pretty well. That's a spot that he can handle. So you can absolutely see the vision of how he's going to translate. His motor runs hot every single game. He has good track down speed. He's controlled with consistent knee bend. Um, and I do not feel a production drop off through games, even though he's playing a lot of times a strong amount of snaps. Though Wisconsin was weird because he didn't play a lot early, and then he did late, and then again, he kind of just cooked. And that was coming off an injury, so he definitely had his best for last like the guy wanted to battle be out there and he balled out in that game so it definitely made sense that he got out there I think it helped him a ton so overall right the kind of wrap up of this the grades across the board here and I would just say this as I showed the grades on screen personally we'll be keeping an eye on guys like John Kaminsky right John Kaminsky's here this season I think in the future this is a player that the Lions could view like okay this could be you know the guy to fill into that role going forward he's the big D end he opens up flexibility for that Sam backer to step down the line he gives us flexibility across the front but I think long term the vision of this guy and Josh Pascal rotating, it could make a ton of sense for the Lions. I think he definitely gives you interior ability, but I don't know if the Lions are going to feel like they can add to or want to pack onto that frame. And if they don't want to, it makes sense to play him in that role. But the flexibility is there. I mean, it's absolutely there. For me, as I said, first step explosion I thought was average. Uh, play strength I think is a real plus within his game. I think he plays with play strength and he creates it the right way, which gives him a lot of upside. But he also is pretty strong in the upper body. It's just the lower body he lacks some mass. Pass rush I think is a plus. I think it's going to be better locking him into a defensive end role versus consistently working him in the interior. I think there's a reason that it's weird as it is the guy on sub packages would kick outside it's like they knew how this worked um but maybe play the interior because you just need consistent interior guys that are very smart that get a position handle blocks he's doing that just as an undersized player we see a lot of guys change positions at the college level that ability to me was also a plus it's just working over multiple gaps I think it's going to be a little bit limited his hand use again is one of the strongest aspects i think of his game i think it's going to carry over really well as well as the body control for a guy at his build um the agility i think is a plus but i don't think that his agility necessarily carries the shake
like or some of the twitch that you would love, which kind of comes back to that explosion. Uh, tackling is good as well. He just lacks some range to me. Football intelligence, one of the strongest aspects of his game. I think he's a very smart player. Uh, in just terms of instincts, you could also throw instincts into that. Plays with nice discipline. The motor runs hot. And obviously the toughness by what we know of him playing through injuries. So overall, again, I don't have like an elite grade anywhere on this player outside of, I don't know, toughness maybe or maybe football intelligence. But that being said, for such a young player, trying to figure out what the role is going to be, it's different in college than the NFL. That being said, you can see it. I didn't see it immediately because of the size and I, where I'd watched him. I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. But you see it when you hear what Brad Holmes is saying, and flexibility is always key on the defensive line. So, you know, we've seen defenses do things like this, right? We have Todd Wash, where Todd Wash was in the past, right, with Seattle, when they had defensive lines, have these types of players. We have these types of players. When we drafted Pascal, and we're like, wait, why we draft another defensive end? I was like, I don't know where this guy's going to play. But we see that that's a valuable position in this defense because of how the Lions play things defensively. This is a guy that has a role for the Lions, but also the flexibility is going to open up potential opportunity year one but I think long term here you have to look year two and beyond I think there's a real clear path to where this guy's going to get snaps so with that being said let me know your thoughts comments below one of my favorite players in the draft Makai Wingo thank you for watching and I'm out